Hello everybody and welcome back. I wanted to give a short update about uh, what's happening with the Bad 6502. Um, I've made a bit of progress with the software. Um, I'm looking into uh, supporting hardware and emulating hardware um, on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, I want to have the possibility to add external hardware and uh, have the Raspberry Pi not interfere with that. It's, it's kind of complicated. I don't know uh, how I'm going to do it, but the most important thing right now and what's happened is uh, that boards arrived. I ordered these PCBs uh, two weeks ago. Let's get you zoomed in a little bit. And um, I've been working with them um, a bit and uh, they look really cool and they well they are the way i ordered them unfortunately i have already noticed that um, there's one trace that is going to the wrong pin um, but there's enough room around that uh, to to fix that uh, and it wasn't really my fault it is actually that the pinout um, in the uh, in the model on Easy EDA is different the one than the one that I have been using, and, uh, and the pin is not well. I think it's labeled wrong. I'm, I'm not 100% sure about that, uh, but it this trace is not where it's supposed to be, and. Um, I also found out that I uh, wired one of the resistors up to the wrong port. Um, not a big thing, but uh, shouldn't have happened. Well, but if you put it together, then it looks like this. So well, that's all there is. And um, of course, on the back side, we have the little fix with uh, one bodge wire, one cut trace, and the missing resistor. And apart from that, it works perfect. Uh, I can even go a lot faster than I could before. And um, the whole package is now a lot safer than it was before. Uh, this is that's a lot nicer no more dangling wires no more taking a chance on uh, accidentally pulling out one of your traces and uh, just ruining the whole thing and uh, causing unpredictable or unexpected behavior and um, if you put the raspberry pi zero on it and then that's what it looks like uh, it's been on purpose that this um, protrudes further than the board um, and uh, the other thing that was very much on purpose is that I do have a 5 volt in here so I don't have to power it through USB of course I can if I'm if I really need it um, I haven't done anything to the to the Linux distro on here yet uh, it's still uh raspbian but well that may come later uh right so um let's get this thing wired up and i'll show you that it works and i'll go over the things that i want to do with it um there is a very small diagnostic port over here which has the clock line the read write line and the irq line um, I found those were the ones where I really needed to have a scope to find out if those were working. And um, yeah, that's, that's basically where we're at right now. So here it is all wired up. Uh, as you can see, power, um, USB OTG um, to my little uh, USB switch and uh, Ethernet adapter 
and the HDMI out cable. And um, you can already see that I have my uh, scope leads attached to this. Uh, what I forgot to do is I forgot to add some sort of uh, ground connector so it's easier to um, scope out the diagnostic pins. I should have done that, but um, yeah, it's for the next revision. Now, everything is set up the way it was before. And uh, yeah, I mean, it just, it just works. Now, if I start this thing back up again, uh, there's actually no changes. Uh, the only thing that is different now is uh, I was able to go faster. So um, I do have a stable 1.5 megahertz, which is nice. And uh, this may, this may uh, go down a bit because the uh, memory select logic is going to get more complicated. And uh, since that is done in software, it might take a bit of time and it might uh, lower the the megahertz that I can achieve but um, let's look at that when when the time comes um, also the select logic for having additional hardware on on the board uh, is going to make things a little bit more complicated but I'm pretty sure that this can be worked out now this board is uh, basically just um, the simplest shield that I can have. And um, I'm going to make another one a development shield, um, which is going to have um, a larger form factor, which is going to allow for the connection of a Pi Zero and a normal Pi. And... Um, I think it's also going to have um, a lot more debug facilities. Uh, so I'm going to have a breakout for every port, uh, for every pin on the processor. And uh, I'm going to make everything a lot more accessible. So if anybody else wants to develop and debug on that, uh, he can have a way better time than I did when I started out with my breadboard. Um, apart from that, that is uh, basically it. I have already uploaded the files that I have and some uh, some testing tools and, and stuff like that um, onto my GitHub. Uh, I'm going to put the link in the description of the video. And I have made this board, or better, the, the revision one board of this which uh, has the trace um, in the right position and uh, the missing resistor added. Um, I've added all of that uh, to an open project on Easy EDA and um, yeah I just I just ordered um, a new set of boards from them uh, this board and the development board. I'm, I'm going to talk more about the development boards once they get here and um, maybe even have a look at what we can do then. I want to start making more uh, platforms available on this and I'm probably going to need some help with that uh, but let's see how it goes um, if we can. Everything is open source the way it is and uh, I don't know if it's possible to get more cores on this. So, so far I have gotten a, a VIC-20 um, to run preliminary and I've, I have an Apple II build that will run, uh, but there are graphics issues still. But apart from that, it, it's just a very, very neat little um, platform to do development on. And it is so simple. Um, because basically what you're doing is you you've got an emulator uh, but it is also running real hardware it's a lot of fun and uh, let's see where we can go um 
I might want to reach out to the um, Commander X16 project uh, and maybe get a quote from them if I can try to uh, implement their emulator using this board and make it available or even start the project. Uh, I don't know if that is possible because I know they have permission to use um, the Commodore code uh, but that might be limited to them because they're doing it on hardware. I don't know how it works for emulation or or part emulation um, with part of it running on real hardware. That might be um, a whole different uh, can of fish. So um, I don't want to get in there before uh, actually having a quote from them. Um, yeah, but for now and for today, that's it. Uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, let's see where things go.